Welcome to PetX Talks, pet experts empowering pet parents. Pet parents deserve expert knowledge and inspiration directly from pet experts. The topics will range from history to innovation, from health to safety, from training to philosophy, and from experiences to inspiration. The pet experts range from veterinarians to researchers, authors to historians, organizations to individuals, and anyone with important information and inspiration for the pet world. We all want to do the best we can for our pets and the pet world. PetX Talks, the experts who give them, and the topics they share will help us achieve that. Are you ready to be empowered? Then join us for a PetX Talk. This PetX Talk is brought to you by Pet World Media Group, your partner in all things pet media. Additional funding and considerations provided by Pet World Insider, Dogwise, and Life is Perfect. Hi, I'm Dr. Janice Ellenboss, and I'm a chiropractor. I've adjusted both animals and people for the last 25 years. I was actually the very first woman in Canada to introduce chiropractic to the uh, province of Ontario. I formed the very first Ontario Chiropractic Veterinary Association. So we had a very strong belief that natural healing was the best. Uh, holism means, when we're going to be speaking about what is holism, what does holistic actually mean, and we also always see the term ultra holistic dog food, and I think it's important to really talk about what the term holism means. Uh, from being a chiropractor, we have also started a company called Lucky Dog Cuisine, which is an all-natural food for dogs that started in my kitchen from a philosophy that my mother had done years and years ago because she always cooked for our dogs. I used to come home from school and see my uh, my mom uh, cutting up beef heart and, and various uh, meats to, to mix it in with vegetables and cook for animals. So I grew up with the idea that everybody cooked for their dogs. I was really surprised to see what was going on with the whole commercial dog food industry. Our little business, though, started from one pot in my kitchen to now we have a 5,000 square foot facility where we ship our dog food all over the country. But what does holism mean? And uh, from a chiropractic standpoint, our whole family always lived a holistic lifestyle. That means that we involved all of the components of healing, both the physical, the chemical, and the emotional part of healing. We, we looked at the whole person, not just a, an arm or a leg, or if a person had a disease, it wasn't just a cancer patient. It was involving how that person got cancer, what, considered, what was considered healing, why did that blockage to healing occur. So when we look at holism, we believe that the whole is so much greater than the sum of its parts. And in holism, we believe that healing comes from within. And our main purpose in a holistic lifestyle is to encourage the body to work as efficiently as possible and to remove blockages to healing. And I've often used this simple elastic band as a demonstration to show the difference between Western medicine approach and a holistic approach. And I used to use this with my patients all the time. But we took elastic bands and we would place that on a finger. And, and if you watch, what's going to happen is that the tips of the fingers are gonna go red and they're gonna hurt. And in a tra traditional medical approach, what would happen is that the doctor would say, okay, take some medication so you don't feel the pain. Sometimes they might suggest, well, go off and, and go to physical therapy or massage and have that rubbed. But as the tissue becomes more and more strangled, eventually what might happen is you might have to amputate. In holism or in a holistic, more natural approach, our idea would be to remove the blockage. Allow the body to start to heal itself, allow that tissue to start to communicate again and circulation to flow. So removing the blockages to the flow of energy is what true healing is about. So that's always an interesting example of what holism means. Um, holistic energy healing is what we're talking about today. And oftentimes you, you, people talk about what goes on with a disease process. Disease doesn't just happen overnight something happens called dis-ease first. So there's the blockage of energy, and we've all had that experience where we don't feel quite right, 
we go to the doctor or we take our animal to the doctor, we notice that something isn't there, they take some or isn't right, we take some blood tests and everything appears normal, but you know that you're still not quite right. And that means that there hasn't been time for damage to show up on a blood test. I used to use the analogy too, if you put a kink in the hose that feeds your grass water, at first that grass still looks pretty good, but the longer the kink stays in the hose, the more the grass will start to die. And again, you need to open up that hose to allow everything to receive the nutrition from that water. So it takes some time for a blockage to manifest into a disease. So what we want to do is look at what symptoms actually do mean. Symptoms mean that the body is trying to express itself. And if we look at your car's engine light, that's a great example of what a symptom is. If your car's engine light is on and you just choose to ignore it, eventually you know that in time something is going to burst in the engine. So it, it is an oil light indicator tells it that there's something wrong. A great way of looking at it too is to take a look at your dog's hot spots. Many, many dogs seem to have hot spots these days. And a hot spot is your skin's attempt to get rid of toxins from within. So if all we ever do is cover that up with either a cortisone cream or if we start to take antihistamines to block that expression from within, then what we're doing is actually driving a lot of those symptoms internally and could be potentially creating even more damage inside. So we don't want to just block symptoms, we want to allow the body to express itself. And certainly, certain symptoms are not all bad. For instance, your body gets a fever, that's the body's attempt at raising the internal temperature so that it makes an environment that's not hospitable for the viruses or the bacteria. So we don't necessarily want to block that symptom. Same thing with diarrhea. Sometimes if you go to for dinner, for instance, one night and you get some bad food and you start to get diarrhea and your body's trying to flush those toxins from the body, you don't want to block that because we're keeping those toxins inside. So symptoms are not all bad. They're the way the body tries to maintain homeostasis and they're also a way that the body tries to remove internal damage so it's it's a very um, it's something that we don't want to just ignore so the the main thrust of a holistic lifestyle is to express vitality it's not just the absence of disease a truly healthy body will resist infection and again, another great example is that all of us have had family members who have a cold or a flu, and mom is looking after kids that are sick, and maybe one or two of the other kids might get sick, but mom doesn't get sick or dad doesn't get sick. And that's often because we need to look at the, uh, the immune system itself. A truly healthy immune system will again resist infection. As a chiropractor, I used to be touching people all the time. People would be coughing on me constantly, and I wasn't sick every day. Only I would get sick if my immune system was depleted, if I wasn't taking care of myself, if I didn't eat well that day, if I wasn't rested. Those things will contribute to a healthy environment inside again, physically, mentally, emotionally. These three things need to be in balance. Chiropractic terms, we call that the, the physical part uh, of health. For instance, if you fall or if you break your arm, that could be a blockage to healing. Overeating can block healing. Uh, all of those physical components of the healing process. Emotionally, there's a wonderful connection nowadays between the, the psychoneuroimmunology where they can actually show that an emotion has a physical effect on the body. It produces cortisol, for instance, that uh, puts damage on blood vessels, it makes us gain weight. So there's a big connection between what we think and our internal body's chemistry. And the third blockage to healing, or the third component of healing, is the chemical part. What we mean by chemical part is that toxins in our air, toxins in the food, drugs and medication are all things that make the body work harder and block that body's ability to heal. One of the biggest things in, in canine health, and, and it's certainly something that I'm very passionate about, is the food that we feed our animals. That is one of the biggest things. Diet itself is one of the biggest things that can prevent our animals from leading healthy lives. Processed foods contain lots of ingredients that make the body have to work a lot harder.
And why is that a problem? Because of the fact of something called free radicals. Free radicals are waste products within the body. So they're produced by cells. Every time the body has to work harder, it produces a waste product. And that waste product can actually damage the cell walls and cell membranes and so that they can't reproduce, the body can't detoxify. Um, so it's not functioning the way it's, it's meant to function. And even simple things like going for a run or playing with your dog, anything that makes the body work harder creates more free radicals. And what are we going to do about those? What can we do to prevent that free radical damage on the cell walls and on our, even on our DNA? Is having a healthy diet. A diet rich in antioxidants helps to prevent that free radical damage. And you've heard lots and lots about antioxidants, but antioxidants are like the, uh, the, the, the cleaning products within the, within the body. It's, the, it's like something that goes along and cleans up the free radicals and gets rid of that potential damage to cell walls and cell membranes. So foods that are rich in antioxidants are going to help the body to work more efficiently. Um, the whole issue of dog food and only feeding our dogs highly processed toxic laden foods is a great example of marketing over mother nature. Common sense tells us that fresh fruits and vegetables are the best things that we can do for our animals. It would be like if you went to your, your doctor and your doctor said to you, well, you're going to bypass all those wonderful fresh fruits and vegetables and you're going to go over to the aisle that's marked cereals and, and you're going to grab people chow and you're going to eat one kind of people chow every day for the rest of your life. You would think that your doctor is crazy, that you would never do that. And yet we do that to our dogs all the time. We feed one kind of processed food day in and day out and wonder why our dogs are getting sensitivities, allergies. One in two dogs nowadays is dying of cancer. Oftentimes we're seeing that in the last 40 years, animals are living actually almost 20% shorter lives because of all the, the processed foods that we're feeding our animals. So it's really important to take a look at what we're doing to prevent the body from healing and that's, that's creating more free radical damage. So I think that it's important that we take the mystery out of feeding our animals. We've been educated for a long time by most commercial pet foods that, my goodness, if you're deficient in one or two nutrients, something horrible is going to happen, and that's just not the case. Um, those of us who are mothers, we had our children, we, we fed them without a, a degree in nutrition. We, we aren't dietitians, and yet we managed to feed our, our children and allow them to be healthy and strong. But the philosophy was always that you keep away from processed foods, you feed them healthy, normal uh, foods, and your kids are gonna grow big and strong. And that's the same thing with our dogs. Let's get back to feeding much more natural foods. So when you take a look at your dog's food, take a look at the label. And when we talk about ultra holistic or holistic dog food, and remember the term holistic can be placed on a bag of food without it truly being holistic. It's just like calling it Frank's food. It's not truly uh, in, in keeping with the nature of what holism means, meaning that it helps the body to work more efficiently and prevents the body from uh, degeneration, but it also allows the body to express itself. Uh, so those are the things that you want to look at for your dog's food. Is it filled with questionable proteins? Does it have meat meal of any kind? Is it filled with lots of powders? Does it have a whole list of artificial chemicals, meaning artificial vitamins and minerals? If it does, it's going to be a lot harder for your body's, your dog's body to digest. So to, take a look at, your feed, at what you're feeding your dog. Ask yourself the question, would you eat it? If you wouldn't eat it, don't feed it to your dog. And I strongly believe that all of us who love to eat, I think it's a huge expression of love. One of the things that, that gives me the most pleasure is having my family come for dinner and, and preparing a wonderful meal for them and seeing the enjoyment that they take out of that meal. Dogs are the same way. The aromas and the smells of food and the, the excitement that they get from eating natural foods is a huge part of the enjoyment and the quality of their lives. So I think that food should be an expression of love. And if you love your dogs and 80% of Americans who have dogs say that they treat them like family members. So if you love your dog, feed them the same quality of foods that you feed yourself. Thanks a lot.
Hello, we're here with Dr. Janice Ellenboss after her wonderful PetX talk, What is Holistic Dog Food? Dr. Janice, thank you. We really appreciate that. A lot of great information. I think one of the questions that I and the audience still has is what are some of the simple common things that we can do to avoid issues when it comes to dog food? Well, I, I think again, common sense is always a, a huge issue with foods and the things to avoid are processed foods for one thing. And, but if you're going to be feeding your dog and looking into cooking and feeding for your dog, you just want to avoid things like onions. Onions aren't great for them. No chocolate, no coffee, no um, macadamia nuts. Some people say are, are not healthy for your dog either. So some people are talking even about avocados, but that can be questionable. So I would certainly stay away from those sorts of things and, and keep it as healthy as you can. I think one of the more surprising things is not only what goes into our dog foods in terms of the food elements, but also water. And I know that's something that you're passionate about. Share that with our audience for a second. It's interesting to see that uh, North America, Canada, and the U.S. are the only countries in the world that still allow fluoride in water. In all European countries, fluoride is banned from water because it contributes to cancer and arthritis. It's actually, uh, fluoride is actually one of the components of sarin nerve gas. It's a byproduct of the pesticide industry, and yet we put it in our water, supposedly, to strengthen our teeth teeth and yet most dentists nowadays realize that it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So please use reverse os osmosis water filters for your dog and do not feed them water from the tap. Make sure you use filtered water all the time for your animals and yourself. If you could instill one simple thing into every pet parent out there to improve the health of their dogs, what would it be? I think just to not be afraid to get back to what we did generations ago. Feeding from the table, feeding table scraps, meaning the same sort of quality. You don't want to feed them uh, the gristle and, and things that you wouldn't eat yourself, but feeding your dog healthy, normal foods that you would eat too. Getting back to basics, getting back to nature and using common sense is the best thing that you can do for your animals to keep them healthy. Well, we certainly appreciate it. Folks, we hope you enjoyed this PetX talk. Thank you for joining us for this PetX Talk. To learn more information about Dr. Janice Ellenboss, visit luckydogcuisine.com. Funding for PetX Talks is provided by Pet World Media Group, your partner in all things pet media. Additional funding and considerations for PetX Talks is provided by Pet World Insider, taking you inside the world of pets. Visit PetWorldInsider.com for more radio interviews and expert articles and videos. Dogwise Publishing, all things dog. For all of your dog book needs, visit Dogwise.com. Life is Perfect, a gift book. A whimsical collection of themed dog portraits accompanied by wit and wisdom by the photographer. Visit thepotographer.com. For more information and other excellent PetX Talks, visit PetXTalks.com. This has been a Pet World Media Group production.